Hello folks, miHoYo just put out a whole bunch of new events just an hour ago and let's go over some of the new juicy stuff for version 2.1. I will go over the main events first and then I'll talk about them more in detail afterwards. So let's see what we have for version 2.1, Floating World Under the Moonlight, Phase 1. So the first thing we see here is the login bonus where we can log in for 7 days straight to get 10 intertwined fates. But notice that the event starts on the 28th. And then right here, we have Ball's Banner, which ends on the 21st. So that means you cannot use these 10 fates and 10 summons on her banner. You have to either use it on Kokomi or save it for someone else in the future. So now that we're on the banner, we have Bell, Ball, my bad, Ball coming out first with Sara that we already know about, and the two rate ups is Shangling and Sucrose. Shangling is a very strong 4 star pyro unit, and Sucrose is a very unique character that has a lot of buffs and with the elemental mastery until Kazuha came around. But since Kazuha is a limited character and also a 5 star, you might not have him, and if you miss him, then Sucrose is a very good replacement. Then we have the weapon banner. This is going to have Ball's weapon, her special polearm with energy recharge, and then the other 5 star is the Unforge. So I'm not happy about this. I was lucky enough to pull and got a Wolves Greystone on the permanent banner, and I never rolled on the weapon banner before until now. I want to get Ball's weapon, but I'll be fighting against the Unforge, which if I get this, it'll just be sitting in my inventory bag because I don't have anyone else that uses that. I already have the Wolves Greystone. And then to make matters worse, we have the Bell as another raid up weapon, which is another one of the most useless weapons in my mind in that in the game. So Mihoyo is like uh, double dipping and double downing on this weapon banner to <laughs> hopefully not to make me suffer. But I'll, we'll see what happens. And then we have the Moonlight Merriment event, which actually starts pretty late. It starts on the 27th. This is where we get our nice tuna fish claymore. We will also get a crown, which is always nice. Events with crowns, always good to have. Then we have the Hakunin Iki event. This is the little domain challenges that has a whole bunch of um, pairs of units that you'll be used to tackle all the challenges. This is the first event we're getting uh, right at the start, a day after 2.1 comes out. Then there's the fishing event, the Lunar Realm event. This is where we get our exclusive fishing rod, as well as some Primo Gems and other rewards. And the event is starting on the 10th. I'm not sure if we need to wait until this before we can actually start fishing because the fishing is a new system into the game while this is just an event. So we'll see which uh, order things arrive in. Then there's the expedition event, Spectral Secrets. This is a very simple one. You just get characters, send them out on expeditions and get free stuff. Who doesn't want free stuff? Anyway, this event starts on the 19th, so in the middle of the bunch. Then the Archon Quest Act 3. You'll need to be AR30 and finish the Act 2 of the Archon Quest in order to continue, obviously. And hopefully we can see more stories on the Raiden Shogun, uh, learn more about her, and oh, we also got the uh, story quest with the Raiden Shogun. So hopefully we'll look, get to definitely learn more about her past and why she's the way she is. And for the story quest, you need to be AR-40, so it's a little higher than the Archon quest to actually do. And oh, it looks like you need to complete the Archon quest before you can even get her in the story quest. And we're also getting two new islands. We have the uh, Seirai Island, which is the dangerous looking one with the lightning and the damage valleys and chasms. And then we have Watatsumi Island, which is a very cool looking one. Reminds me a lot of the coral region in Monster Hunter World. Looks very nice. And let's see what else. Trial run characters. Yep. And oh, the top off for the Genesis crystals. So this doesn't really matter for free to plays, but if you're a light spender or a 
a whale or a dolphin, it's nice to get your double bonuses back once again. And then there's a whole bunch of uh, booster bundles that you can use your Genesis Crystals that you just spent on. And then the Moon Chaser event, which is just the Battle Pass event. They keep having different names, but it's pretty much the same thing. I guess the rewards might be a little different here and there, but that's very minor. So it's pretty much the same thing that we have for almost a year now. And then Aloy from Another World. For Phase 1, between 2.1 and 2.2, if you log in on the PlayStation account, you can get her from the in-game mail. And for everyone else, you need to wait until 2.2, but before 2.3 to get her on the mail. I'm guessing this means if you wait until after 2.3, you can no longer claim her from the in-game mail, so she might be missable. She right now doesn't have any constellations. She doesn't have any constellations yet. We will get some way to get constellations for her in the future when that time comes. I'm not sure if it means she'll be in her own banner and you have to pull for her. So those people that might have missed her from 2.2 or 2.1 can get a chance to pull her in the future. Or some other method, um, event related method. So we'll find out, but it seems like she might be missable. So make sure you log in during the events in order to get your free 5 star character. Now let's look at the patch in more detail. This is pretty much the patch notes of everything in 2.1 so far. The maintenance begins on September 1st in the morning on Asia in Asia time and it takes about 5 hours like normal. We'll be getting our 300 primo gems during the maintenance period. And let's see what's new. We have new islands. Yep, we have Seira Island and Watatsumi Island. We have new domains, okay. The first one is on Narukami Island, which is the starting island. It's the perfect place for a duel before the throne. So I'm pretty sure this is where we're fighting the new weekly boss, Signora. In case you missed the previews and all the news. I'm looking forward to fighting her. And we have another one, Palace in a Pool, which we can get Primo gems and Electro Seals, so this seems like one of those story one-time reward domains that we can do. And then the new fishing system, which I'm super excited for. It will give us a lot of stuff to do while we're out of resin. It's, it will make the game more relaxing, you know, make it more like Stardew Valley or like any of the mini games with, uh, or any of the games with fishing mini games. So really looking forward to this. I love fishing mini games. New characters, yep, we have our four new characters, including Aloy. Phase 1 and Phase 2, yep, so we talked about how PlayStation users can get her in 2.1 and then everyone else in 2.2, and then she'll be gone in 2.3. Four new weapons, the Polearm for the Shogun, the Catalyst for Kokomi, the Tuna Claymore, and the Catch. The Catch looks like a very, very good weapon, and... At least for these two, we can get them at Refinement 5 for free since they're event weapons. Or at least this one's the event and then the catch is from fishing. But you can still get Refinement 5 of both of these. New events. The Hyakunin Iki event, which is a tag team event. Let me pull that up right here. See, this is the tag team event where there will be a new challenge unlocked each day for the first six days. Each tag team will get an exclusive Garyu Art, which provides a buff to the team on the field. This challenge requires you to defeat opponents and get enough scores within the time limit. And we will get Primo Gems and a bunch of materials as rewards. Continuing on, we have... The next event is... The one that starts on the 28th, which is the 7 day login for 10 intertwined fates. Remember, you cannot use these fates for Ball's banner since <laughs> the login reward comes after her banner is gone. Sad days. There is the new Orcon quest for Act 3. Hopefully this will conclude the Shogun story and then take us further into Inazuma or maybe even a prologue for another area in the future. New story quests with the Shogun, so you can hopefully see 
her past and find out why she's the way she is, what happened, and maybe she's not such a bad person after all. She's just misunderstood. New world quests? Yep, nice. New monsters. So we have Signora, the Hydro Hypostasis, the Electro Oceanid, and the Spectre enemies, which are the little flying helicopter thingies. <clears throat> Other additions, so let's see what else we have. Adds a new mechanism where the probability to trigger a character's voice line related to treasure chests. Okay, so new voice lines with treasure chests. New recipes, a whole bunch of new recipes. New achievements, which is nice. More achievements means more free Primo Gems. More name cards, more animals. So we have an eel, another eel, and some loaches. I'm guessing... I wonder if these drop the same loach, pearl loach materials that we haven't found a use for yet. New fishes, yep, there'll be plenty of new fishes since the new fishing system is coming. The Pool of Sapphire Grace. Ornamental fish caught via fishing can be raised in this sort of pond. Okay, so this is the um, little outside aquarium that you can build and put in your teapot to show off all the trophy fishes you caught. New bundles that you can spend Genesis Crystals on, yep, we saw that earlier. New chat emojis, so that's nice for people to have fun with. The Spiral Abyss, so Floor 11 has the new disorder, it's called Corrosion, and corroded characters will lose a fraction of their health every second. Active characters can be brought down by Corrosion, so you can die from this debuff. And the non-active characters with HP less than 15% no longer lose health. It lasts for 10 seconds and can stack. Wait, how do you how do you stack characters? When oh when opponents are defeated. So as you keep killing enemies, you'll lose more health. Um depending on how much health you lose every second, it'll determine how bad this debuff is. Doesn't look doesn't sound good though. Floor 12. This floor only, the ley line is normal. Nice. No debuff, everything's normal, good to go. The new buffs that we're getting, phase 1. Uh, after a character uses elemental burst, all party members' attack increases for 15 seconds. Maximum 7 stacks, when you get 7 stacks, normal attacks will unleash a shockwave, do an AoE damage. So that's nice. Using Elemental Burst, you get a buff, so everyone's like a mini Bennett that will stack. The buff lasts for 15 seconds, so I'm hoping this stacks, each stack refreshes the timer. Otherwise, I don't know how you can get 7 bursts in 15 seconds. So yeah, it must be refreshing every time you do a burst. So you eventually get your 7 stacks. I don't care too much about the AoE damage, but I like this little passive here. Phase 2, for 10 seconds after a character uses the burst, that character's normal and charge attacks will unleash a shockwave at the cost of 1% one of, uh, of the character's HP, doing AoE damage. This effect is gone when the character leaves the field. So another nice one where after you burst, you will keep doing AoE shockwaves and oh let's see right here. Active characters can go down as a result of this HP loss. So, if you're at low enough health and that 1% pushes you over, you can die from doing extra damage. But I don't think, think this is a problem with the health loss, it seems like a very good buff overall. And then adjustments and optimizations. Let's see, new Genesis Crystal being refreshed, yep we know about that. Good for spenders, useless for free to plays. The Stellar Reunion system will feature some new updates. Um, I think the Stellar Reunion is the returning bonus, where if you haven't logged into the game for 14 or 30 days or something like that, you get uh, some rewards and bonuses to help you catch up faster. So that's nice for your returning friends and all that stuff. Let's see, what else we have? Character, you adjust the glow effect of Lumine's outfit when she's elementalist. That's pretty unique. You're, the only time you can encounter this is with new accounts or I guess the people that want to 
play the game on a challenge and never imbue with a statue of the seven. Uh, so it's weird change, but I guess it's a better impression for new players. Next up, optimize the animation effects of Kazuha's House first on lower graphic setting. I always like uh, optimizations with animations and stuff. It requires or it puts less stress on your hardware and that's always a plus for me. Optimization is always a plus. When a character is attacked while immune to some damage, such as using an elemental burst, the shield damage absorption will not decrease. So I didn't know about this. I thought during your dashes and your burst the iframes, you're just not taking any damage at all, but apparently your shield takes damage still. So this is a nice fix. It makes your shield last longer. Monsters. Uh, optimize your lock-on ability when attacking sentinels after the boss splits up. So I never really have much of an issue targeting the sentinels after the perpetual moray boss goes to the ad phase. But eh, okay. Remove the Nobushiki skill to jump back. So I know they do this little firework attack and then jump back afterwards. So are they just gonna do the firework and not jump back or there's another jump back that I don't remember. Yeah. Anyway, next up optimizes the combat experience with their sword drawing technique. I never have much of a problem with this. It's, I see the flash and I dash and that takes care of it. Reduces the weight of Nobushi and Kairagi's. Ooh, this is nice. This means that right now Venti, if he uses his burst, the Nobushi Samurais don't get sucked up into the air. So maybe this will let Venti actually CC them and pull them with his vacuum, as well as other characters with vacuum effects. Increases the time that the Pyro Hypostasis core is exposed when it launches the pyr Pyro Pillar attack. So I know a lot of people were complaining about how little opportunity you have to attack the Pyro Hypostasis, especially in the Spyro Abyss. So I guess Mihoyo is listening and is letting you hit the boss for longer, which is nice, makes things easier. And it increases the duration of the ignition skill and optimizes the character's lock-on experience when attacking Fire Seeds. I never had any issues with attacking the Fire Seeds. Every time I use Barbara, even when I'm right next to the boss, I just walk towards the seed in that and then attack in the direction and it worked every time. Maybe this is more for like mobile players. Audio adjusts the frequency of Ayaka's idle voice lines. I guess she's either talking too much or too little. I don't know which one because I haven't really heard much of her idle voice lines. Optimize the trigger mechanism for her character's voice lines with weather, friendship, using devices, enhancing artifacts and weapons. So more optimization with sounds. Optimizes the Chinese and Japanese combat voice lines for some characters and for certain quests and fix the issues where the Japanese voice were missing from certain quests. So, yep, more fixes, always nice to see. Others, adds the height limit to Thunderwoods area e effect. I'm not sure what Thunderwoods are. I guess from the sound of it, it's one of the... It's either the tree or the little tree stumps in Inazuma that deals damage. Never really had issues with those. Optimize the judgment condition for a shogun when the shogun enters the vision hunt decree battle stage. So I know in the story quest a lot of people were having trouble and issues trying to get past the shogun. I don't know the spoiler now, it's been a while, but yeah, having trouble getting past the shogun. Uh, so I guess they're making it easier, hopefully. Optimize the style of the crosshair while aiming. I uh, never really looked at the crosshair, but we'll see what the new version of new style looks like. Adds prompts for loading screens. Um, right now the loading screens give little short hints. I'm not sure what they're going to change about that. Adds new voice autoplay function, so that's nice. Reduces the load taken when placing furnishings, so more teapot optimization. And adjusts the requirement for purchasing the recipe from AR-40 to AR-25. I don't use food much, I'm not sure what this recipe does, but well, you can buy it earlier now. 
Alright, so that's pretty much it for the event. Let me see my other tabs uh, to make sure I didn't miss anything. So I went over the banner, both the character and weapon banner. Looking forward to rolling on this one. Not looking forward to this one because I have to fight the Unforge. Oh boy. Let's see, the Hyaku Iki event with the tag team pairs. The fishing event where we are getting... Let's see, we are getting the event exclusive fishing rod, moon stringer, as well as some primo gems and some furnishings. The expedition event, which is just for rewards, not much actual involvement right there. And the moonlight merriment event, which we can get another crown, always nice to get more crowns. Primo gems, more recipes, and the tuna fish, wherever you are. So that's what we have. For 2.1 phase one thanks for watching i know this was a long video of me just rambling around talking about the updates but i, I like sharing stuff like this with you guys and as always have fun out there traveler